Hello, hello. Welcome to DCAF with the Beacon Center of Tennessee. I'm Taylor, and I have another fun, exciting guest. Mark's been a little under the weather. So today I have with me my work little brother. You know, people say that you have your friends at work, you have your friends outside of work. Jordan's like my work little brother. So I have with me Jordan Long, uh, who I pick on mercilessly and who absolutely fires straight back at me. Jordan, own it. Own it. Tell them, tell them that you taught me and that you are mean to me sometimes. I'm not going to admit to being mean to you sometimes, <laughs> but absolutely, um, you deserve it. I mean, I would be remiss if I, I didn't fire right back. So, uh, you know, I'm just standing up for myself, really. This is what it's all about. <laughs> okay. As if I'm the aggressor. Come on. I am, I am a precious, I am precious. You're a foot taller than me. Jordan's a bully. I'm just kidding. Yes. Jordan's not a bully. Mom, mom, don't think that. My, my mother listens to this podcast. Mom, don't think that Jordan's a bully. He really is like my work little brother. So it's really good to have you on the podcast with me today, Jordan. Yep. It's been a while. I'm glad to be back. Um, but, you know, it's hard to replace Mark or Stephanie or Justin or whatever. But uh, I think we can, you know, we could probably break through that barrier today on the number of viewers. Yes, absolutely. We're going to give them a run for their money. Let's go. Uh, even though the first topic that we're going to talk about is one that absolutely gets my blood boiling, but there was an op-ed in the Tennessean earlier this week. Maybe it was last weekend. I'm not sure, but it was talking about certificate of need laws in Tennessee. Now, if you're not familiar with certificate of need laws, here's what they are. It's a permission slip from the government to open a healthcare facility. If anyone wants to open or expand on a healthcare facility, they have to, or a healthcare service for that matter, they have to go through the CON process. Now, the laws aren't as rigorous as they used to be. Back in the 80s, the federal government put these laws in place, and the federal government has since repealed them, but there are still a handful of states, more than a handful, honestly, that still have CON laws on the books. Picture CON laws this way. You have, you want to open a Chick-fil-A. But in order to open a Chick-fil-A, you have to go before a board that consists of employees of McDonald's, Popeye's, Zaxby's, Guthrie's, all the Cane's, all the other places that serve fried chicken. And they can tell you if you are allowed to open a Chick-fil-A, if there is a need for a Chick-fil-A in your area. Now, Jordan, you're as much of a Chick-fil-A lover as I am. Does that sound acceptable to you? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> your Alabama roots are really coming out right now with all your uh, fast food <laughs> restaurant examples. What Guthrie's Guthrie's is so Alabama. It is like <laughs> straight up down home, but uh, they repealed a few. The legislature repealed a few of the CON laws years ago and a few more post COVID Jordan, as someone who has worked in the legislature, give us kind of a landscape of how these, these CON law repeals have been going over time. Yeah. You know, like you said, I, I love the analogy that you gave because <laughs> It's so hard to understand to, to a normal person, but until you tell them, imagine, imagine, you know, imagine having to get KFC's permission to build a Chick-fil-A next door, then it just hits. Yes. Because we, we would much rather have a Chick-fil-A. Um, but I think Amen, it, took, honey. it took, you know, some of COVID and just years of like the tumultuous landscape to realize that these are not working. It didn't work at the federal level when they tried it to try to try to control costs. It, it wasn't going to work here. Uh, the legislature put a really good step forward in repealing some of these. Now, unfortunately, we still have, I think, 20 services that you still have to have a certificate of need for. Um, but it's so much better than it was before. Um, and I think we have 15 states in the country that don't require certificate of need at all. Pretty sweet. Um, yeah, Pretty it's sweet. awesome. And so I think that we definitely have um, more reform coming. Um, it is definitely a slow process. You know, healthcare is like the industrial complex. Yes. Um, you're going to have various industries and different groups, of course, fighting that because uh, it's super protectionist, right? Imagine having the only hospital in a county. Yes. And being the only one there. And then you've got someone that wants to uh, put a hospital or, or some other facility that still has to have a certificate of need for. And you got to go before a board and you have to put, uh, before this reform, extremely expensive to submit the application, time consuming, yes. much better now, much more work to be done. Yeah. I mean, we, we've talked to some folks in the past. We have some videos on our Facebook page where we've talked to people who in the past have had to go through the process and gotten denied for radiation, for cancer treatment, MRI machines, home health, like things 
when I, when we tell you that everything used to be restricted, it was so incredibly restrictive for people to be able to access health care because of these CON laws. And it really is a permission slip from the government. Now we talk about permission slips from the government all the time to be able to do work with occupational licensing, with CON. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. And I, I'll tell, I'll say it this way, like I tell all of my friends that don't really understand why I'm so passionate about doing what I do. And people who say, well, the government needs to be there to regulate. No, nothing works better than the market regulating itself. When like, I, you'll never convince me otherwise. If something isn't working, people will not use it. When a restaurant opens and it's either overpriced or the food tastes like it was microwaved, like Olive Garden, it's not gonna stay open. It's not, it's not going to work. And so did I just insult you by insulting Olive Garden, Jordan? You looked very shocked. Are you an Olive Garden girl? I, well, first of all, I love Olive Garden. And <laughs> my dad says the same thing. So maybe there is some truth to this. But, I, I mean, how could you be upset about endless breadsticks with what? But I'm you're so proving my exact awesome. point is that the market <laughs> works itself out. I it will does. not be visiting Olive Garden, but you will. And it's popular because of that reason. And so whenever the government tries to put the boundaries around a certain industry or something, they're not letting the market do what the market does best is right. work itself out. If the healthcare quality is not what it should be. There are other systems in play that are going to work that out on its own and they shouldn't be restricting access to healthcare regardless. And so this is something that other than education is like the next top thing that I get my blood absolutely boiling on. We're doing some more research on that right now. Stay tuned. And if you want to check out the op-ed from the Tennessean that we posted on our Facebook page, it'll be just a couple down from this video read it. You'll learn a lot from it because a lot of people don't even know that CONs exist. Uh, there's been a lot of corruption on CON boards throughout the country. I won't go into that right now, but that's that was how I first heard about them years and years and years ago. There's, there's a lot of room for reform and here's to Tennessee pursuing it with my coffee. Cheers to that. Um, Jordan, when was the last time you had to fill up your car with gas? This is really switching gears, but when was the last time you had to fill up? Unfortunately, it was yesterday and I was driving without my contacts in and I thought okay. it was going to be the same price it was like three days ago when I got gas for 309 and it Dude. was 339 um, Yes. Yes. So, and you know, here's the, here's the really bad part about this, right? Is that the, the, the pump I pulled up to, the person before me had, I guess, gone in and gotten exactly $30 and that $30 mm -hmm. got them eight and a half gallons and this is ridiculous you, but for someone who's maybe i got a family or you know you've got kids to feed you've got to eat you got to put gas in your vehicle to get to work this is really bad because this is this super is really expensive. bad 30 30 dollars you 18 20 months ago got you a lot further a full tank. The reason we're bringing this up is because news broke this week that OPEC is trying to keep the gas prices high. They don't want to negotiate. They want to keep them high. The price per barrel has come down significantly since June, but not significantly enough to really make much of a difference. When I bought my car in 2019 and I could, I had been driving a car that required premium gas until then. I bought a car that would take regular gas. When I bought my car then, it would cost $35 to fill up the entire tank. Today, I was running on zero and uh, on the way home from my little breakfast mentor Bible study thing that I do at 630 in the morning, I was on the way home. I was like, if I don't fill up now, I'm not getting out of my driveway. So I pulled in the gas station, 336 per gallon. Yep. It costs, I don't even want to talk about how much it costs because it was the price of a beautiful pair of shoes. That is a pair of shoes, which I know is shallow compared to a lot of other people's <laughs> needs, but I'm single, no kids. I can buy shoes. It right. was, it's costing so much to get gas. And I, I do understand the, the thought behind restricting gas purchase from Russia so that Putin doesn't have all this ammunition for his war against Ukraine. Like I do like understand the thought behind that. However, what I don't understand is why we're not drilling our oil. And also what I don't understand is just the messed upness of human nature of the people in charge of OPEC saying, I mean, it is capitalism. So it, there is something to understand about that. You can hold both things. I just couldn't like the thought of, 
punishing other countries and withholding to make money. It's capitalism. I get it. That's what we do. But it just makes me feel so sick. I say that I don't understand because I'm the victim of it. But like, I just, it makes me so sick how expensive gas is. And I'm wondering like, what can be done? This is hurting so many people. I, I just, it makes me, it makes me want to cry. I won't cry, but it makes me want to. Yeah, I, you know, and for those people, like I said, that you've got to pick between food or gas or, or whatever the case is, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel I feel really bad. Um, and I, I actually, I, I was up this morning when you were awake because oh. my dog decided to jump off the bed and it woke me up. Um, oh, good. <laughs> but I, I just, I was reading, flipping through some articles and I came across one on Yahoo Finance and um, it said that we'll see $65 a barrel gas before we see $100 a barrel gas again. Um, oh. and I think probably right now, um, this morning it was probably $88 a barrel. Um, mm. and so with, you know, cutting 2 million barrels per day, mm -mm. you know, I, it's not good. It's not good. It's, it's really not. And this is really what happens when you rely on other people for things that you could do yourself. Right. Um, yes. Jordan, yeah, this is just, say it louder this is, for the people yeah. in the back. Yeah. I mean, it really just shows, um, I love this other article I found that said the fist bump didn't go that far. Um, from uh, so, I mean, again, it, I think it really just shows that we we should we never had to be in this position, really. We don't have we to be in this position, be, but we but we are. Um, and as quoted by someone this morning that will remain nameless, I hope you're happy. Right? Yes. Like, Listen, I hope you're happy. I... Thank you. I know. I have a lot that I could say about political pandering, about um, choosing to kick the can down the road on certain things. There's a lot that I could say about it that we don't, frankly, have time to talk about. But you see that when the markets respond to actions from government officials, and even though the gas price of a barrel didn't go up a lot in the last week, it still went up. And so the price at the pump went up exponentially. When I was in Alabama last week, I paid two ninety two per gallon. Today, three thirty six. I mean, come on, that was on Sunday. So prices, the pumps are already responding, and I think that the best thing that we can say to leave this on is we didn't have to be in this situation, and that's yeah, just I, something to chew on. It, I'll I'll end it. I want to read this this headline from Markets Insider. Do it. Saudi Arabia lowers oil prices for Europe, but raises them again for the U.S., as White House says OPEC Plus is siding with Russia. Okay. I know there's a lot of political things in play, and I'm by no means a Secretary of State. However, that's ridiculous, and we got to do better. We got to do, do better. There. Got to do better. I said it. We got to do better. I love it. Um Speaking of someone who's got to do better, Jordan, how's your football team doing? Hey, tell our mm. listeners, tell our listeners who your football team is. Because um, they, ain't, they ain't the Crimson Tide and they ain't the Jacksonville State University Gamecocks who won in overtime and, this week. So, yeah, and I'm glad that they're neither one of those. Um, okay. Um, you know, I am a fan of the University of Iowa. Go Hawkeyes. Which makes Listen to me. It makes no sense. Do you do you people hear his accent? He is no Midwesterner. Jordan, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, Unpack it. My, what the heck? <laughs> my dad is from Iowa. Um, it went to undergrad and med school in Iowa and all that. And so um, been a longtime fan of the University of Iowa. Never been to a game there, unfortunately. Um, it is you not fix that, that. Yeah, I know. It's super difficult to get to a game. Like there's no direct fly, you can fly in somewhere else and you got to rent a car. It's, and then, but if, and then if you want to go to some of these closer games, it's like, I don't, I'm no, I don't want to go to Northwestern. Oh, I want to go to, no. I, you know, I want to go to yeah. Kinnick stadium to see the, yes. you know, one of the best traditions in college football, waving to the children's hospital. I love it. It has not Sweet. been a good year. Not been a good year. No, we got beat not been a good year at all. Really bad yeah, last bad, week, but I'll bad. tell you what I saw the other day. That was absolutely hysterical. Um, Head coach, great guy, makes a lot. One of the highest paid coaches in college football, Kirk Ferentz. Wow. Yeah. Who knew? Like $6 million a year or something. Something crazy. Oh, Rivals my with gosh. You guys down there in Alabama land. Seriously. Um, his son is the offensive coordinator. Um, and the offense is terrible. It is so bad. But the article, well, it was a parody. Sure. It was a parody. Hey, we love it, nepotism. We, we love yes, nepotism, we especially do. in sports. <laughs> especially when it's not good. And it, I love this right, article. Right, right. Um, um, I can't remember what the son's name is. Maybe Brian. I can't remember. 
whatever. It said you know, Brian Florence promoted to university president, so I didn't have to fire him from the football team. I loved it. It's so true. Um, we got absolutely destroyed last week by Michigan. I wouldn't say absolutely yeah. destroyed. It was like 27-14. But, I mean, y'all um, got beat, though. That's like a double beat. score. That y'all got beat. Yeah, though. got beat. In the first two weeks, we scored, scored a combined total of 14 points. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that's like not funny, but also it is. Also, so it is actually so funny. It's going to be a long year for you guys. Well, listen, we got Texas A&M this week. And last year, the Texas A&M game, I uh, went to bed. I was on a work trip for the weekend. I went up to my hotel room. I got in my bed and I turned my phone off. The last time I, I turned my you. phone off. I was making fun I, of you. Oh, honey, I know. I tur- you're the reason <laughs> I turned my phone off. I, the last time I turned my phone like off and not on like do not disturb or silent or whatever was when I was like getting in trouble in high school for having bad grades in math. I never turned my phone off. I completely turned it off. I actually blocked some people's numbers. I don't take losing well. And my dad always said, show me a good loser and I'll show you a loser. That should tell (laughs) you everything about my personality that you need to know. But I, uh, yeah, I don't take losing well. And so this week I'm a little, I got a little tummy tickle about uh, Texas A&M. Not in a good right. way. I'm a little nervous. Big challenge. But we overcame the challenge with Arkansas. And I got to give a shout out to my JSU Gamecocks. I was at the game last week. And we beat uh, Kennesaw State for the first time ever in JSU history. It was an overtime. I will never get my voice back properly. I'm still kind of coughing a little. I still got sandpaper throat. But um, I will never get my voice back from how loud I yelled at that game. But let's talk about baseball for a second because the Braves clinched the NL East this week. Um, I always do love seeing the champagne and the beer and the cigars and everybody's so happy and they get their fresh T-shirts. You know, if we don't win the World Series this year, I will go back and get an NL East t-shirt but I'm, I'm still waiting i'm still waiting for my one brave shirt of the year to be a to be a world series shirt yep. jordan what do you think about what's going on in baseball i love playoff season and i know you love baseball like i do i do it's been an, listen this has been an awesome year for baseball and yes. baseball needed it too because you know, mm-hmm. I, I had read i actually read something this morning in the email i got um that said like you know the savannah what is it savannah bananas um, the Savannah Bananas are coming to Nashville. Yeah, yeah, like that whole, yeah, it was that. Like that whole approach to baseball is going to be the new big thing. Like a, sta- a, a person in the stands catches a foul ball and the batter's out. Like, what is this? Uh, it's it's so insane. sick. But it's, it's like, it's so different. The games are so much shorter. Um, I mm-hmm. get that. But baseball needed this year, and it's been awesome. With, yes. Listen, I'm, I'm a lifelong Cardinals fan. It's you are. Awesome. It's so awesome to have. Albert Pujols back and Yadier and have all of them going out at the same year. Uh, it was like he was destined to get the 700 because it was such a slow start to the year. And yes. And guys cranking out two a game. Um, so I beautiful. Love it. I love it. It's, it's, it's exactly what baseball needed. Um, Aaron Judge, same thing, right? I mean, yeah. it's just been a great year. It has. I'm going to do a book recommendation before we move on. If y'all could see my podcast set up right now, it's terrible. All my, like my computer and microphones are all stacked on books, but right under my microphone today, I have a book that I would recommend to everyone. I got it for my brother-in-law for Christmas and I got one for myself. It's called the baseball 100. Jordan, write this down. It's called the baseball 100 by Joe Kuznansky. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but he is a very famous baseball journalist. He wrote this book about the hundred greatest players of all time. It is fascinating it's available on amazon i pre-ordered it for christmas last year two copies obviously but it is so good i would recommend it to everyone if you're a baseball fan like us read the baseball 100 it is so good um we only have a few minutes left but when jordan called me this morning to talk about podcast topics he made the mistake of taking the lid off of something that i always want to talk about which is tom brady and giselle but more importantly celeb love drama so jordan you know nothing about pop culture i feel like that's yeah i feel like that's an accurate representation of your knowledge about the subject absolutely but do you know what happened with tom brady and giselle just for the record i actually feel more intelligent not knowing it Just, what does that mean about me? <laughs> don't no, answer don't, that. Your mom don't watches this. I'm not going to say anything. Um, yeah, don't I, answer. <laughs> I actually saw this last night. I was eat, eating dinner, and it came up on the TV. Um, I mean, 
Interesting, at very least. Jordan, you know what happened. Tom Brady retired, I know, and then un-retired. he unretired without talking to his wife. Now, I'm just saying, if a man did that to me, I'd also, I wouldn't pack my bags. I'd pack his bags. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Like, I get I mean, it. I get it. <laughs> one of the most interesting things of the whole Tom Brady whole deal is Antonio Brown posting a picture with Giselle on social media. Antonio Dude. Brown is crazy. <laughs> No, he he's is insane. Crazy. He is insane. And I just, I saw that and I was like, I don't even know where this fits in because I know so little about it. But it makes me laugh because he also got I, in some hotel in like Dubai or something. Antonio Brown gets in trouble everywhere he goes. I don't Ever. know if he's been hit one too many times, if he's done too many uh, substances, or if he's just a troll. Like, I don't, I don't know what his vibe is. I can't pinpoint it. But I think that he has lost it. So he posted a photo of Giselle. That is yeah, him, so him and funny. Giselle together, like on a field or something. And it, it's <laughs> it's bizarre. And then it was just at the same time as this. And I thought I have no idea what's happening. Also, don't want to know what's happening. Um, right. But you know, you is this a like you said? You can't. Is un-retire. this a situation you can't unretire? But like, is Antonio Brown like shooting a shot? Because you can't get mad at a man for shooting a shot. I have no idea what Antonio Brown is doing, but also neither does he. So that's true. So I, we're I, all on the same page. But go back to what you were saying. You can't just unretire without talking to your family. Yeah, no, definitely can't do that. Um, that's a problem. I'm sure. I'm sure it's great money uh, to unretire. Uh, yeah. Um, he did have to pay that guy back for like his last game ball or jersey or whatever mm-hmm. that sold for mm-hmm. like two million. So there's, you know, he lost some money there. But I, yeah, think, I think I think Tom Brady's doing okay. You know, I, I think, think he can handle. I think he can handle the game ball. Like I really yeah. think he. I think he was okay after purchasing that back. Yeah, yeah I think he's fine. It, it was, you know, uh, they've been married for thirteen years or whatever. I mean, it, it's something they got some you kids. Have to retire, right? I mean, I, I guess you can't and Brett spend Favre time with your family. I went to the Elton John. Yeah, really. I went to the Elton John concert the other night, uh, and he was saying, "I'm, so I'm seventy five years old." It was so good. He said, I'm 75 years old and I'm retiring to spend the rest of the time I have left with my family. I'm like, you're probably like 50 years to, or 20 years yeah, too late probably. for that. You probably should have done that probably. in your 50s. But probably. I'm thankful he did it because that means that I get to enjoy it. Also in mm-hmm. celebrity love drama that Jordan literally had to look up, we won't go as deep into this one. But the stuff with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, guys, keep your eye on that. I remember when the news broke in 2016 that Brad Pitt was – uh let's just say not the best father, not the best husband. And I think that this is going to be spicy and turn into a Netflix show. I think that someone's going to pick up the rights to Brad and Angelina's life. But what did you say before about Brad when we were talking about him? You said he probably was a scumbag. What did you say about him? Yeah, I think I said he's probably a sleazebag, you know? Yes. Yeah. This is is very strange in the 30 seconds I spent reading it. Um, Very strange. (laughs) To, you know, and bad, right? Bad, sad, all oh, those it's things. Horrible. Obviously, very bad. Um, but listen, when I was younger, I remember you know hearing all kinds of. I mean, I'm talking you know, years ago. Yes, Brad Angelina, Brad Angelina, this and that, and and holy, it's <laughs> always it's always something with the celebrities. Well. It's, it's probably always, always something with everybody, but it doesn't get published about us. It doesn't get published much. Listen, all I want is to live a boring life. I, I'm big in the celebrity gossip. All I want is to live a boring life. I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I love just a boring, simple life, especially when you see these people who are the, the Antonio Browns and Brad Pitts of the world. It feels weird to put them in the same sentence, but maybe we ought to at this point. I mean, it, it feels feels right now. Both very strange people. I it's like Antonio Brown is worth in and of itself a whole segment of all yes. the stuff he's done. And we should do that later. He would probably like join us to talk about it because that's just the kind of kind of whack. He probably guy sees he no fault in what he's right. done. There, no, of course not. He sees no fault. He, oh, Lord. oh, it's such a strange well weird this place is weird. This place is weird. I think we should sign off. Jordan, you got any final thoughts other than this place is weird before we go? No. Gas is too expensive. I don't know. I'm just going to have to stay at home the rest of the next two or three months. I don't know. We'll stay at home and we'll live a boring life because this place is weird. That's our closing line and I like it. Guys, thanks for listening. Jordan, thanks for joining me this week. We will see you guys next week on Decaf. Be sure to subscribe on Apple and Spotify.